The question that everyone is asking at home is, can I record this video in less than 20 minutes and make it the fastest raw built YouTube video ever recorded? We all know that the answer is no. <laughs> so let's get into it. You, uh, I asked. <laughs> That's my impression of Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty good, actually. That's like if you're telling Jimmy Kimmel a story, that's how he reacts to you, to you, to you telling it. So you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I went to the store the other day and then I bought some cheese. And he's like, look, the, the store, <laughs> the cheese. End scene. <laughs> All right, I asked you to ask me your most pressing questions as it related to short-term rentals, real estate, podcasts, my love life, my financial life, work-life balance. We're gonna be getting into that right now. Let's go. So for the short-term rental focused questions, I actually asked my host campers because you know, they're my students and my students have questions. Okay, let's get into it. Leo coming in with the fire on the first question. What's worse, strict short-term rental regulations or no Chipotle in vicinity of the rental? I mean, look, if you invest a lot of money into an Airbnb and you spend 50, 60, $75,000 getting it ready, and then short-term rental regulations are imposed that stop you from running your business, that's super sad. But it's also kind of your fault for not buying an Airbnb in close proximity to a Chipotle? What were you thinking, bro? All right, I like that one, that's a good one. That's a good one. See, yeah, I, love, I like a good curve, a little a good curveball like that. Host Camper Taylor says, why are you convinced that short-term rentals are still the future? Well, here is my POV on the subject. For our whole life, for many, many years, for decades, Decades, all we knew were we accept the status quo and what I mean by this is whatever the way of life is is our only reference point and we're okay with it so if you think about taxis right our whole lives for the last I don't know however long taxis have been around a hundred years we'll call it we've only ever dealt with taxis and so whether they were crappy or not we had no choice we had to use taxis right and then uber comes along and completely disrupts the idea of taxis now you can download an app on your phone tap it and have a taxi on demand for like 10 to 30 bucks. And now taxes are becoming more and more obsolete. And guess what? They're probably not gonna make a comeback. And I think the same goes for hotels. Our whole lives, for a very long time, we have always accepted the idea of hotels. You go in, you pay an expensive price, and you get a small, tiny room. You get room service, but you don't really have a lot of options, right? Super 8, Econolodge, Motel 6, the Red Roof Inn, whatever. And that's all we've ever known. And Airbnb comes along and shows you that you can effectively have an aesthetic, cool, experience-driven hotel on demand. You get an app and you click it and you reserve it for you and your friends. And instead of cramming six people in a super tiny hotel room on crunchy sheets and blankets and duvet covers and carpets, and for a pretty hefty price, or getting two hotels and putting three people in each one, and now instead of paying $250 a night, you're paying $500 a night. But guess what? The other room is also still a gross, crunchy, nasty, probably very storied hotel that you would never really want to know the truth about what happened in there. <sighs> I lost my train of thought, honestly. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so we've always known hotels and they've always been expensive regardless, but a lot of the times expensive kind of crappy, Airbnb comes along and now you can rent a house or a townhome or a condo that has more bedrooms in it that now you don't have to squeeze in a tiny little room. You have a house for the same price or maybe it is a little bit more expensive. There are, why am I so passionate about this? I, I think it's because I'm so annoyed with the people that fall for the rhetoric that Airbnbs are supposed to be cheaper than hotels that are not. Maybe that's how they started. But are you telling me now that if you get a four bedroom house for 500 bucks a night that shouldn't be more expensive than a $200 motel. It's like crazy. So now people are finding out that it's fun to travel with friends and family in big groups under one roof because that makes traveling so much more convenient. Sure, it may not be private, but it's a lot more communal. And you build way more memories as a group sharing one space together than cramming like sardines in some dinky hotel. So I think short-term rentals are the future because now hosts are just trying to one-up the experience little by little by little by little to the point where now Airbnbs are are these freaking insane places to stay for a relatively affordable price when you divide it over the group of people. I don't think it's going away. I don't think hotels are going away the way that taxis are, but they definitely have good reason to be worried that I'm here to eat their lunch. And you too. Next, wow, okay, I was supposed to like, I told Caleb I would answer these very <laughs> short and concisely, but you guys got me all fired up. <laughs> oh, I hope you cut that. Natalie asks, your movie inserts are hilarious. Whoa, yes! I'm hot! And you're not! I've been working my ass off! Yes, I know that. Okay, you guys, listen up! You get high? Sorry, folks. 
It won't happen again. Those were all pretty good, honestly. Do you watch a million movies or does your editor? We both watch a lot of movies. Caleb watches really bad movies from like the 90s and I watch what I consider to be cinematic masterpieces of the arts. But both of us, basically. How do we find out the local laws, rules, and regulations of short-term rentals? Well, you're a host camper and I'm gonna just beat you up a little bit here and say that there is a video in the host camp curriculum that goes into depth about how I find out the short-term rental regulations and a, you know, short answer here is you Google it. If you wanna find out if Airbnb is illegal in Amarillo, you go to Google and you type in Airbnb Amarillo short-term rental laws. Easy. And then you type that same question in three or four variations, go to the news section, read all the articles, and then make an inference based on that, and then call your city and confirm. Boom. I usually. Sarah says, design regret. What's something you spent money on for your first short-term rental that you regret? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I spent nothing. I spent no money on my Airbnb. Our company is worth nothing. Yeah, I think in my very first rental arbitrage Airbnb, I got literally like 90% of it, 95% of everything off of Craigslist free or let go for like 10 bucks and everything broke and everything was junky and everything was not nice. And it still absolutely crushed it and made me one to $2,000 every single month. But that was some nasty, creaky, grainy furniture. So would not recommend. I always encourage my students to spend a lot more on furniture than I did because I just know that you should buy nice, not thrice. Thoughts on creating an oh my God listing. Okay, so if you don't know about this, Airbnb just recently introduce categories on their homepage, and they have a bunch of architectural genres ranging from tiny homes to lakefront properties to ski-driven properties. There's a section on there called Oh My God, which are what I call architectural anomalies. They're basically like super weird, quirky Airbnbs, like a giant boot, for example. And actually, Airbnb right now just started a $10 million fund where they want to fund up to $100,000 towards your own wacky idea. So I'm really all in on this. My dream, honestly, is to kind of move away from traditional homes and short-term rentals and just focus exclusively on the weird shit. Honestly, like I'm a big fan of things like a big giant boot or the big giant potato in Idaho. To me, those are really bookable experiences and I think that people will pay top dollar to stay in them. And honestly, even if they don't, like that giant potato, I don't know what it costs, but let's just say it costs $50,000. I think, I think it books for like 150 to 200 bucks a night. I mean, that's not necessarily top dollar, but relative to the cost of that potato, that's top dollar. That's crazy. You know, like that's what I like about the oh my God listings is that they don't have to cost you a lot of money. They really don't. It just comes down to how creative can you be. So for me, I think as I chase happiness and what I really want out of life, I think really focusing on like tiny homes and weird, cool, unique glamping and tiny home and just wacky Airbnbs will be the passion that I start chasing here in the next couple of years. So if you wanna help me chase my passion and you also want Oh My God listings and you wanna invest in them and you wanna be a capital partner in something like that, there's a link down in the description below where you can fill out a form to invest with me. And also speaking of chasing your passions, if you're passionate about getting started in the whole short-term rental game, if you wanna start an Airbnb business, if you don't know where to start, if you want to quit your job to become a full-time Airbnb host, if you fit any of these categories, then please consider enrolling in Host Camp, my 12-month Airbnb mentorship program, where I basically give you the blueprint, exactly how I did it. And I teach you everything that I have to teach from up here and down here. All right, down here. You know what, seriously though, this is one of the great joys of my life. My students have way cooler listings than me and the fact that I get to impact the short-term rental community in that capacity and help people make money and follow their dreams, it's what I consider like it's goals. Like I've reached it, I've arrived, I've done what I set out to do and that's impact you guys. So if you wanna book a call with my team, you can head over to hostcamp.com or you can click the link down in my description below. Anyways, not to get too sappy, let's keep going here before I cry. No, I'm just kidding. How do you think short-term rentals perform during recessions? You know what, this seems to be a really, really big question right now. Everyone seems to be very worried about it. I've been thinking about this quite a bit over the last couple of weeks and you know, as, as things have began to unfold and I really think that my POV on this is pretty, pretty similar to what it has been. Look, back when I was getting started, the glory days of Airbnb, it was really possible to hit like a 30 to 60% cash on cash return. And now what we're seeing is something that's closer to like the 20 to 30% range. But let's just say that it even goes down to 10 or 15%. I wanna put that in perspective for you because right now, if I'm pulling off a 20 to 30%, that means in long-term rentals, I'm gonna be making a six to 12% cash on cash return. Typically, it's a little relative, but for the most part, in the stock market, in a really great year, in an, in an average year, we'll even call it, the stock market averages a 10% return. Same thing with crypto. You can really go to the moon if you hit the jackpot, but guess what? The stock market is tanking. The crypto market has tanked. Now, it will absolutely recover because that's how 
how the world works and that's how the economy works. But right now you're not really gonna make a return, but you can buy low and buy the dip or buy the canyon, if you will. So now let's talk about long-term rentals and short-term rentals. I think with the increase in interest rates, now instead of getting a 20 to 30% cash on cash return super easily in short-term rentals, that might equalize a bit to 10 to 20%. Now, if you remember, I was saying a 20 to 30% previously, meaning a six to 12% in long-term rentals. So if short-term rentals go down to 10 to 20%, what do you think that means for long-term rentals? I'm predicting that long-term rental investments will dip down to a zero to 8% cash on cash return. I can't predict that, but that's just my hunch at the moment. I know a lot of people right now investing in long-term rentals to break even because they're cool with the appreciation game. They're also cool with the cost segregation and the tax write-offs that come along with all that. So what does that really mean exactly? Well, you're probably not gonna make a return on stocks and crypto right now at this point in time. You're gonna be hard pressed to find a really like a decent return in long-term rentals. So the fact that in short-term rentals, you're gonna be making possibly, right? So don't hold me to this, but let's just say it did in the apocalyptic world, get to the point where short-term rentals were making 10 to 20% cash on cash return. That's gonna be one of the only places to make a 10 to 20% cash on cash return. You're not gonna be doing it anywhere else. So if you're looking at any level of decent returns, and in my mind, it's very obvious that short-term rentals are gonna be the place where you wanna put your money. So much so that I'm pushing forward with my own fund with Tony Robinson. We're gonna be constructing 20 houses made up of tiny homes, small homes, and really amazing bigger homes too. That's gonna be a five or $6 million raise, but the equity that we're building in is really gonna be unparalleled. But there is a small catch there, and it's that it's a 506C fund, so you do have to be an accredited investor. But because it's a construction project, it's really gonna be going on for 18 to 24 months. Consider investing in the Investor Collective. I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to fill out the form. I've also joined forces with Techvestor 2, and we're gonna be raising tens of millions of dollars here to acquire short-term rental properties all around the country. That's something that you can literally invest in right now. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Big things are coming. I've got big plans for 2022 and 2023, regardless of what people think are gonna happen, because regardless of what happens, there's always gonna be deals out there and you just have to work harder to find them. Look, it may not necessarily be smooth sailing, but thank God I work hard and I work for my deals and I make deals work. Cause you know why? You know what I'm gonna say? Because real estate is not hard, but it is hard work. You know what? That's it. I have like a thousand more questions to get through, but this video already got away from me. Just like every video on the Raw Built channel. What questions do you have? Leave them in the comments down below and maybe you'll be featured on the next Raw Built AMA. Or you can also enroll in Host Camp, my 12 month mentorship program over at hostcamp.com. And you can ask a question on the Facebook group and you'll have a much higher chance of that being answered on the channel. Thanks again to today's sponsor here, Vacation Rentals. Friends of the channel, they're doing really great things and I just invested like a thousand bucks in one of their properties. So with that, happy Monday, everybody. But if you're watching this on any other day, then just have a day. But happy Monday if you're watching this on a Monday. All right, bye.